Okay, let's take a look at a Blitz game that we've just played this second. And... Trying to work in all the factors that we've worked on recently, right from the start through to now. So basically, the makeup of the answer process as best possible. So blocking the pawn off makes sense, nice and steady. It's also managing these squares here is this pawn. I think it's always good to look at the basics as to why you're doing a move every single move that you make on the ball because every move you make should be a rational thought out process not just to develop the piece it should really be doing something that's the general idea for the answer process it's the impact so now the opponents push down uh, they're trying to manage one of the key squares for the pawn but we can defend the pawn for now some engines would just take this pawn off the board you know when you do your evaluations it would probably suggest taking the pawn off there are limitations to gambit type things and we've covered those in the gambit videos but you don't want to lose tempo in terms of getting your other pieces out into the game and that's the whole idea behind gambits really is that they want you to lose tempo in developing your main pieces so that you're not managing key squares so they bring their knight out obviously defending the pawn on this side gauge bar is showing that that's not the strongest move but I'm not going to pay too much attention to the gauge bar on here at this moment we're looking at the value of the moves that we're making um, underneath the answer process and making sure that each move has a purpose chip out okay so now they're going for the fried liver looking type thing as well in a sense but it's equalized the situation in, in terms of the evaluation bar so not going to lose any sleep over that so now we're taking the pawn and we've been practicing this not new thing because we used to do it when we were um beginning our journey type thing we used to just take everything off the board no matter what if we developed a piece out and it was attacking a piece we were just taking those pieces off and recent evaluation uh, i've looked at this gambited um, scenario and i've said well okay if i've developed some of my pieces out we may as well take it off the board because it might have the advantage of pushing down you know and then you know sort of locking down the game a little bit which does make it a little bit trickier it doesn't really give them a ma major advantage but makes it trickier because you don't get your other pieces developed the white square bishop sort of stuck in the back so yeah i'm having to work with the fianchetto side which i don't like doing so i've decided well when if we're in this situation i am actually taking it off we have developed three minor pieces feeling fairly comfortable with the position so that's why we've done that capture there so the opponent's castled and because they've castled and we've looked at this position before as well based on the capturing of the pawn and also if this pawn is not supported then we can actually freely capture more so because we have a piece in front of our queen and it's not our queen uh, sorry in front of our king and it's not our queen so the rook can't come across and face off the queen and get the queen off the board so this is why i'm willing to take this pawn it's probably more difficult say if the bishop was out here like we mentioned in the earlier part of the game and if we then did take that pawn which i've seen many people do then the rook comes across and then the knight's kind of pinned to the um, the king so then shuffling the queen or something to try and defend the knight you end up basically losing the knight because it's pinned to the king or pinned to the queen so long term the bishop move here really from my experience it's ended up putting me in a bad position longer term probably because I haven't played it right but each of my moves has a rationale so we took the pawn based on what we've just explained and then the opponent came with this type of move and I, I thought mm, I don't really know what that is but we, we took it anyway because it's going to be a simple exchange down 
So now the knight is in the center of the board. I'm just going to have a look at the, the tally. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there was no real benefits for the opponent actually doing that bishop sacrifice. I did think they were going to come with something funkier, maybe coming here. Maybe they changed their mind uh, because the knight was going to be taken. And so with the knight just taking the knight, then they're not actually winning out in a sense. Um, the earlier pawn grabbing, in a sense, from, from the knight gave us the additional pawn position as well, um, advantage. So all in all, it seemed to work out quite nicely. Our king is not castled, so our king is now airy. So we've got con cause for concern there, but at the moment we've got our pawn defending and blocking any attacks from his rook so i am thinking along the lines of <coughs> potentially getting the rook here and maybe getting the castling done this way at some stage but for now probably need to look at maybe challenging the knight with a smaller piece just to get it out of the way because it's looking a bit funky probably coming towards here he's got this and this obviously we can take back with our bishop and if he takes back then we win the win the knight in that sense but we're giving them something to do so now they've got one piece on here at the minute so we bring our rook across i don't really want to delay the um aspect of being able to get my king safe so they push down and then we get our king safe so i'm feeling fairly happy with this situation at the moment we could have gone out there all guns blazing and gone wow yes we've got the bishop he's, he's giving it up but as we've always said, you've got to make sure that your king is safe or else it's stuck in the middle of the board. The queen's coming down, challenging it. It gets blocked off and then it's it's all over. So the knight jumps in now. So at this point here, I'm thinking, I, I think the opponent may be playing give up chess um, because the bishop attack didn't seem to pan out the way that they were planning. But we continued as is. So we grabbed and then just supported the pawn here because he's got a two on one. So everything nice and simple, straightforward. Just looking at what the opponent is attempting to do, trying to do the shock factor, I think. So they grab the pawn, our rook can't grab. So they've got a general idea as to what to do with the game. It's just that it looks like maybe the move order isn't done in the right way. Gage bar showing that we're out and out kicking it here. Um, didn't feel like it in the game, you know, even though like we, it, we, it looks even Stevens. I didn't count the pawns when I was on there. I thought well I need to get my bishop out or something, get something doing, you know, maybe attacking here or maybe get the bishop putting a check on the king, maybe the queen getting a check on the king, you know, to get activated, you know, and start putting pressure on this pawn here, maybe attacking the, maybe attacking the knight with the queen, you know, and try and work around that way somehow. So always for the B-pawn in a sense, you know, so get the queen activated. I have one of those options here. Could have gone with the bishops as well, you know, not, maybe not there, but here blocking off. So options and choices. So we opted for the queen check on the king, so at least we could get the pawn. If the rook then came, we would be able to take the knight off the board, so I don't think they would do that. But they moved the king, so we grabbed the pawn. Okay, so that's all pretty straightforward stuff, uh, mobilizing to gain a bit of a tempo. So they actually moved the knight, so again we could come down and challenge this knight. Yep, and actually in the game when I came down, uh, in the periphery I saw, oh, there's the bishop as well, you know, but obviously the bishop's protected by the rook. Um, but that was, the, that was the big sell for me in that coming here, I'm, I'm, I'm targeting two. Okay, but these little things, when you've got tunnel vision, it's, um, <laughs> it's you get drawn into a trap. But yeah, the rook, I realised then that the rook is protecting the bishop, so we weren't going to go any further with that one. So they push the pawn down, so again, this is pretty straightforward stuff. We can actually sit here, or we can sit here, and just to still keep pressure on the knight. Could come here, across here, but I'm coming... To me, it's like going into hiding. I wanted to maybe keep a little bit of diagonal somewhere, you know, just to get the queen active a little bit more. Whereas this one, it looks like this pawn's blocking off my activity. Only place I'm coming down to is here. 
but I might be wrong. Anyway, so the rook comes and challenges. Um, half expected that really. So we bring the queen up now. We're attacking this pawn here. At the same token, we're looking to maybe could push here, but we're still attacking the knight. The queen is protecting the knight just in case they got any funky ideas because sometimes they do forget and they move the queen out of the way. So he actually comes down for the exchange, so wasn't too bothered about that. Looked at the board and this was when I did my count of pieces. I thought, well, is this going to be of benefit to me? So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. Five pawns. His knight's on the edge and feeling fairly comfortable his bishop's pinned to his rook so feeling quite nice that we feel a little bit advantageous in the game still got to get pieces mobilized this rook is um, tantalizing onto this pawn so we have to be mindful of that because the bishop really wants to get in the game because i need to link up my rooks so we'd need to be concentrating on pushing this pawn up here or even to the knight whichever and then we can start mobilizing the bishop either to attack or to block the pawn a lot of thought processes going on there but this is the interesting thing about chess those options and choices and trying to find the potential value for each move so we grab the queen so they took so then we push the pawn up as we mentioned this rook was looking to face this pawn down and didn't choose to go for the knight at the minute because the potential maybe we're coming here could support then it could support this pawn if we were going to target here so a little bit of forward planning not too meaty but it it has like many folds that one move is protecting itself but it's also able to support this pawn if we were going to challenge this pawn at a later stage so the knight came through i did actually expect the rook to come here though to actually challenge this pawn that would then got my bishop off the back either here or here um, but obviously they brought the knight across so that was uh, a saving grace so now we can bring the bishop through and start attacking making it more active got this space here as well to attack the other rook if need be and then they move their rook and I did I did sigh to myself because I thought oh, all that work and this bishop's just going to disappear now so we grab the bishop reluctantly and then they brought the knight the knight is attacking the rook but what is it facing and at this point i did think they were doing give up chess but then i looked at it and i thought no it's not actually it's actually attacking the rook and it's not seeing the ninja ninja bishop so we grabbed the knight again reluctantly and at that point they resigned so it was an interesting game up until that point um, as you can see I was getting into the mode of um, really working the pieces and really trying to get them developed and looking maybe to go a bit further in the game but um, when these minor major blunders happen you have to be able to take advantage of them so unfortunately that was not a good situation so I couldn't practice anymore on that particular game so we're going to go in on to our next game just to have a look but yeah interesting game overall helps us to look at why we're actually doing moves each move should have its own story if it's not got a story then you're not really giving the move justice or your pieces justice or your actual game justice so you really every move has to have a story not just oh i'm developing it because i'm i want to develop it it has to have a real valid move order rationale